All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast, brought to you each and every time by Aura. Now, Aura Ring is is uh, is next level, whether you're wanting to track your sleep, your recovery, your activity. We've seen all these uh, sort of wearables and trackers over the years on the market. Aura has, you know, they've upped the game. Uh, advanced sensor technology, minimal design, mobile app, easily downloads every morning, lets you know you know, just lets you know how your rest was, all the sleep cycles, um, heart rate, heart rate variability, core temp, all of these essential metrics. Um, It's walked them right into all the big leagues, right? I think it feels like we're sort of getting past the global pandemic, but Aura was key for these leagues, uh, making sure these athletes were staying safe and healthy. Uh, Partnerships with the NBA, the WNBA, UFC, a bunch of the big tech leaders out there uh, rocking it as is this entire team over here at The Move. Head on over to AuraRing.com. That's O-U-R-A Ring.com to find out more. And there, and it's back, the Aura Flow Code. Just hold your phone up there. That's, that flow code is a dope idea. It's very cool. Yeah, you don't need any software. Just uh, point your camera at it. Uh, I got a little grief yesterday for not introducing my cohorts here, my partners in crime, my bad. We're just, it's been been a minute since we did this in person so joined by jb hager who's usually in austin and now he's we're all right here and and this guy at the far end the man with all the scoop the man in the back of the car the man that just gave me three stars george hincapi so we're talking about stage one and our good friend just so you know he's he's become a an institution our pillar of the show our good friend alana azizi has again Given us all the correct pronunciations because we will fuck this up every time, I promise. QLN. Stage one, Brest. Two, Landerneau. Bre- <laughs> Brest to Landerneau. Um, we'll get into today's action, but man, what a... Holy hell, we, I'm, not, I, I'm not really sure what I saw today. That was, that was a crazy day, but I want to... I wanna, I want to get into that in more detail, but today's show also brought to you by Roca. We talk about them all the time, uh, and I and I mean this: the, the, this is the best glass out there. Whether it's the performance glass, the Matador, all the other performance glasses, or the prescription glasses, I personally use mine for reading. JB, you got new prescription transition lenses. You, I walked up yesterday, and JB's Rocas looked like he was thought he was John Lennon or something. <laughs> They auto tint when you get out. But you the, got uh, you. Yeah, and you, yeah. you were saying there's some quiz, or you went on and you. Or there's like a a, a retina. Yeah, I did the test. I did the you know mail in try on. Okay. My wife and daughter picked these lenses, and then uh, yeah, you just you can use. I didn't know you could do progressives without doing it in person. Right. And you use an app which measures the distance between your pupils. And then they fill the order. I've got progressives. I've got readers in here as well. Well, isn't that something? It's slick. It worked great. Um, Roka has completely rethought and remade eyewear. Um, it's and again, I say it all the time. I mean, just an amazing group of folks down there in Austin, great athletes, always hammering. So they, uh, they practice what they preach, uh, for our listeners, 20% off head on over to Roka. That's R O K a dot com. And, uh, type in the move at checkout for 20% off. And there's the flow code. Last one here for a sec. Amp human. Uh, really proud of this company. We're, we're proud investors uh, in AMP. Uh, by the way, there will be some uh, news regarding AMP Human this week. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, PR Lotion right here is, is, a, is, is one of our daily go-tos. This is uh, buffers lactic acid. Um, this is the most effective way to buffer lactic acid that I've ever uh, used. I use it uh, every day. Training. I almost said racing, but I never race unless I'm out here with George. But George... I've hidden all the tubes of PR lotion. You will not be getting any. Um, it's a game changer, and you'll you'll see it uh, uh, in this year's tour. Garrett Thomas is is an investor um, and a partner of theirs, and you know he was right up there today. He's gonna he's gonna be a factor in this race. He's a religious user uh, of PR lotion. Uh, head on over to amphuman.com slash the move. There's their flow code, and uh, type in TDF twenty. At checkout for twenty percent off. That's amphuman.com slash the move. Well, you know, some of these days it starts boring and then all of a sudden the shit just starts happening and and what a day. 
I mean, where do we even begin? I mean, the, the, there's there's probably ten things that that stand out in my mind. I, I, I guess if I can just th- throw this out there first. I mean, what a what a ride by Julian Alaphilippe. That kid, that's a bike racer. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we, what a he champ! Was, he was on all our of our list as one of the top guys for today, but. What he ended up doing and just basically riding away from the best in the world like that with what we thought was a way too early to go. That's two, what two, you thought. Two kilometers to go. Just an unbelievable move and super classy. He had crashed earlier in the stage, which was probably part of that spectator crash, but unbelievable win for him. And I think we're going to see a lot more from him this, mm-hmm. this tour. Yeah. Right, there, I, there's your winner. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> right. Now, I wonder if he's got another, another few tricks up his sleeve. I mean, yeah. I was surprised a couple of years ago when he – contended for so long that guy that we saw today and he looks good i mean obviously the what, what you saw the acceleration and staying away but just looking at him yeah in years looks past you, you've talked about how he's burning too many matches burning it's not gonna it's not sustainable and he kept surprising us in the past yeah well yeah, it's funny because you this morning what stands out to me with 80 kilometers to go you're like this is boring i mean come on how long do we have to sit here and watch this but yeah i did sure enough that. 65k to go you see all the teams spread out in the front they knew something was coming. They knew the narrow roads were coming. But there's no way any of us could have imagined what was to come. I mean, that was one of the craziest crashes we've ever seen. A super unfortunate incident with a fan. We just hate to see something like that happen in the, the first the, stage of the Tour de France. These idiots. I mean, they, they, seriously, that's the only way to – so if you – and you, they, of course, show it uh, multiple times on TV. But trying to get on TV with your back towards a – charging peloton with a large sign that says la grandma and grandpa i mean what a fool what what are these people thinking and i just and higgs brought up a good point like is this we've seen it as sports have come back and spectators and fans have come back it's like it's like they've lost their minds they don't know how to behave themselves i mean in the nba they're throwing beers on players and it's like then this person is standing in the road like uh i mean that's just and what i mean what a massive pile up yeah, I mean, I was, I was kind of um, excited to see all the fans out there. We haven't seen that in a long time, and it's almost like the race is the racing is back to normalcy. But then you see something like that, and perhaps the fans are a bit too excited. I mean, they need to understand the rules of the roads, and you know, this was not a rider fault. This was the fan in the side of the road and took out Tony Martin. It was just horrible to see. Well, mm. not to mention that that Tony Martin and Jumbo Visma were doing exactly what you need to do: staying in the front, protecting their rider. And it still bit him in the ass. Yeah. Well, it's funny because Lance was just sitting, sitting there going, I think he could have dodged this guy. There's no way he could have dodged. The guy uh, had a huge cardboard sign in the middle, not in the middle of the road, on the side of the road. The, Tony Martin could have just gone left and taken out the, all the guys or tried to go through the sign, which is what he did, and he ended up taking his bars out. There was no uh, chance for him. I, was a, I had actually resigned that <laughs> argument, and, and I was not going to bring it up. But well, you, since you, I mean, you're pretty just, adamant about it. Well, but, I, but everybody um, disagreed with me, so I was I was. You're just going to go with it, and you just threw me under the bus. <laughs> but I, I do think he could have moved over a little, but it it wouldn't have changed the result because it, you know if he moves over, somebody's still going to hit this idiot standing in the road. Um, but oh my god! I, and you can't you there there is no amount of awareness that will teach these people. We 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 talk about this every year. Like it, something like this happens. Yeah, like, I would like I would like to see more money instead of you know messing with riders positions and and bar bar lengths and, and bar widths like let's let's get some advocacy out there to the fans like stay away from the riders i mean this is their this is their biggest race of the entire year and for something like that to happen where they almost took out a rider like primos and a lot of guys went down i mean it's unacceptable well and and even if guys get up and finish uh with a reasonable time you know if you hit the deck you hit the deck and 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 the tail on that yeah, you're on the back foot for the rest of the tour. I mean, yeah. today's stage was hard enough. It was 3,500 meters of climbing, almost as many corners, narrow roads. We all know that area of France. Um, you know, traffic islands is just you, – you don't need that. As a rider, you don't need to start the Tour de France with a crash. When you were saying 3,500, and you said it yesterday, I thought you were saying 3,500 feet. No, I mean, meters. that's 10,000 feet of vert. That's – wow. 200 kilometers, 10, 000, over 10,000 feet of vert. I mean, how would you guys feel starting out your tour with a stage like today, as it, where you didn't, you know, no prologue? You don't like that, right? Well, it was it it didn't rain. Right? It was it was forecast to be raining the whole day. Now uh, we'll talk about tomorrow, but the forecast is for rain tomorrow. Um, but you know, 
if I'm in that peloton, I'm like, oh, thank God it didn't rain. I mean, day one in the rain with 10,000 feet of climbing, nervous, uphill finish, it just amplifies everything. But the roads stayed dry, which, you know, I mean, imagine what would have the carnage if those roads are wet. Yeah, I mean, I got up early this morning at 5 a.m., you know, because I'm all in for this show, <laughs> and uh, realized early it, it was looking like a normal stage. Six guys away, Peloton was going relatively easy. Two guys at the front with Albacine and um, Quick Step keeping the breakaway under three minutes. Just a pretty standard stage. And I thought, okay, this is this is good because it's such a hard first stage that you don't want to see these guys going all out from the gun. And there was everything was under control. And like I said, 65 kilometers to go, you saw the nervousness pick up, the stress pick up, all the teams up there, all the big teams up there. And unfortunately, 15K later, it was just carnage. Mm -hmm. And I think we got to talk about Matthew Vanderpool because there was so much was made of of this stage and his desire to, to – to win the stage, which is stage one, and take the yellow jersey, which his grandfather, who uh, passed in the last in recent history, never had the yellow jersey. He was eight times on the podium, Raymond Poulidor. Um, and, and, you know, so much made of it that, that they changed the jerseys to sort of mimic his old Mercier jersey. Um, he just didn't, uh, it didn't have it. And we were getting reports, you know, at some point in the race, he stopped to change shoes. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't. Then he was going back and, and, and you know bathroom breaks, no teammates with him. No, yeah. and he just didn't. And then he, of course he was caught up in that second crash, which we'll get into, which is even uh, maybe even gnarlier. Um, he just didn't have it. He didn't have the matches. And and I mean, Ala Philippe just said, you know, well, you know what Ala Philippe said? He said, "See in the douches." He said, "See in the douches." I mean, I thought it was from the beginning when Johan, you know, our our cohort there in, in Spain was talking about how they already planned his bicycle, his shorts for when he gets the yellow jerseys. It's a bit too much pressure for a young rider like that, even though he is one of the best in the world. This is the Tour de France, the and largest his, sporting and event his first. in the world. His first Tour de France. He's, you know, trying to honor his grandfather's memory. It's, it's hard enough to try to win the stage on your own. So I think it was a bit too much. And he's still finished in the first group, so I'm not saying he's bad. He just wasn't didn't have it quite there today. Mm -hmm. But we're going to see a lot more of him in the coming the next week. And Roglic and Pogacar looked, I mean, of the GC favorites, they looked... The strong, the, at least to me, they look the strongest. Yeah, and we're still assessing the the injury report. It looked like Roglic went down really hard, so who knows what he was dealing with. But for him, not having raced since the edge, best only edge, and still coming through this carnage relatively unscathed, we think, and getting third on the stage, um, second or third on the stage, is just is super impressive. And he made a statement today that I'm here. Although his team, unfortunately, with guys like Sepkus, Tony Martin, which are the, some of the captains of the road, had some terrible bad luck and. Hopefully Tony will be be okay. He looked pretty banged up there. Yeah, Roglic did finish third, so he got a a four second time bonus. We saw him sprinting for the line there um, against a true sprinter and a good Michael chance Matthews. to remind people if you didn't catch our our preview show from one week ago, you all picked Roglic yeah. for the win. Yeah, and we all picked we all would have picked Vanderpool for the win today too. But and we we saw Van Art Van Art was up there strong. He wasn't able to follow Alaphilippe. But still came back and did a, kept it under control there for um, Roglic on the last 1,500 meters. So it's good that the team is there. They had another one or two guys in there as well. Unfortunately, like I said, Sepp wasn't there and Tony because of the bad luck. But the team is, uh, is, is strong. Mm. Mm. And, and just as we settled from the carnage of the first crash, the spectator <laughs> caused crash, we were settled in. We're like, okay, let's watch the end of this. More carnage. Yeah. A bigger crash. Higher speed. More impact. Yeah. Higher speed crash. Two guys, it happens all the time. Just two guys touch wheels. They're going fast. Next thing you know, I mean, it looked like it, lo it looked like a hundred guys went down. Yeah, mm -hmm. downhill crash, six kilometers to go. I mean, that's the race is in full action there. And unfortunately, we saw Froome go down. I mean, mm -hmm. the guy's got a lot of hardware in that body. Those those hits are not like normal hits uh, when you haven't been through what he's been through. So we're hoping he's okay. He finished the stage, although I, limped across the line. I, yeah, I think he goes home tonight. Yeah, I was uh, – while you're talking about Froome, it looked, didn't look like he was going to get up at all for a moment. No. But, you know, maybe you guys can elaborate on that. When you're that close to the finish, you, you probably just choose to limp to the finish and then assess your damage. Well, he, got, he had right? to get help to get up. So – and you're just – I'm in my mind, I'm thinking everything this man has been through over the last two years lands on those parts that have just started to heal or, I mean, mm -hmm. if they've healed, but they're still going through a lot of trauma. And like I said, I'm hoping he's okay. Yeah, I give him that, man. I was that. If you wanted to tap out, that was your opportunity. I mean, you've got all these, like you said, all these places that that are, you know, they are not healed, right? And and at that age, it takes even longer to for them to totally heal, if ever. Um, 
Yeah, I give him I give him mad props for getting back on the bike. I didn't think he was getting back on the bike. I was yeah. like, that's it. Take the number off. He going home. But damn. Bunch of other uh, people lost time because of that. It was, it was cute. We were, Anna was watching the race with us. She's like, well, they're in wait up, right? <laughs> and even the nice guy, George, said no. Six kids. Six kids. He's yeah. like, no. I was like, whoa. Ain't nobody waiting there. No, you got to go. But, and you know, uh, and uh, Quick Step was already at the front. They were already in full race mode. They had the confidence in Alaphilippe. They knew they believed in him. And mm -hmm. you saw them come into that final corner with 3K to go, full gas. You can see Al Alaphilippe on the radio. Which at first, you know, you don't know if he's saying, guys, slow down. But he was obviously saying, let's go, full gas here. Mm. Um, the dude was feeling good. And for him to go with two kilometers to go and be able to hold it and extend his lead was absolutely incredible. You thought he went too early. I did. You kept I saying did. it, too early, too early. Um, he, well, I, mean, I you, that, that, that's, that, was, that was a bike race right, move right there. I mean, you, got, was, you got a guy like Roglic and Pogachar just behind him trying to catch up, and he's just pulling away from them on an uphill finish. Yeah. Super impressive. Very impressive. Um, before we talk about today's winners and losers, losers we'll jump in and uh, talk about some of our other partners. Ventum. Love these. I uh, love my new whips, right? My NS1, my GS1. Uh, it's my go-to road frame and gravel frame now. By the way, to Team Ventum, uh, thank you for sending a road frame to, to the little man, Max Armstrong. He got a new NS1 yesterday. Cherry red. This thing looks just looks fast. It's coming for that Enzo Hincapi any day now. Uh, direct to consumer. Deliver this bike uh, fully uh, assembled right to your doorstep. Uh, money back guarantee. Also, was awarded one of Bicycle, Mag Bicycle Magazine's best bikes of 2021. I mean, what else do you need? Uh, also, uh, go to the website to register for a free custom NS1 frame set during the tour. Head on over to VentumRacing.com slash The Move. That's VentumRacing.com slash The Move. And use the promo code The Move at checkout for 10% off any purchase. Last one. Uh, great partner in Hammerhead, another company that uh, we're super proud to be involved with over at Next Ventures. This is, this is where's my maps? Why is it not showing up? There, I got to get it just right. But in terms of head units and cycling, and this is JB's uh, head unit. I've been looking through some of your rides. These seven mile rides around <laughs> around Town Lake in Austin to the pub. don't count. Yeah, those you shouldn't upload those. But um, uh, the, the, this head unit is, is next level, right? Forget ever, whatever you've used in the past. This is, this is the latest and greatest piece of tech, uh, Strava live segments, which George and I used on the we do segment challenge there and Brevard. Um, it, it, you know, it's just, it's an evolution of, of the head unit. So head on over to hammerhead.io and get you. And by the way, the K2, the Karoo 2 is on sale now, hammerhead.io. It's a game changer. Today's winners and losers, man. We had we had um, the, the you know tour ended for a lot of guys today. Richie Port. Well, yeah. I don't. I wouldn't say it ended. He's only two and a half minutes or less than two and a half minutes behind with Lopez. I mean, obviously they didn't want to be behind. Uh, it's a tough situation to be in, but the tour is not over. Two mm -hmm. minutes is uh, you know it's not ten minutes, and they they have a chance to work their way back in. Right, yeah, but, but he's two, got two, two minutes on day one, and he's got two, two leaders that were in the front. Um, Teo Gegenhart had a bad, you know, unfortunately got caught behind that crash, lost yeah, so a, I spoke a lot to, of time. I, sp I spoke to Teo uh, briefly after the stage and he, he didn't even go down. A guy just went into his bike and smashed his bike in half. Wait, you were just saving this, this, you well, just talked know. to the, to, <laughs> to one of the favorites <laughs> of the race. This is why I leave my service on because I get this, this stuff. You didn't even tell us. I didn't well, see you talk to anyone. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> He's just like grabbing the phone. Guy, ran, talk, in, talk. guy ran into his bike. There was so much carnage from that crash. The cars didn't have any room. So, I mean, think about it. Guys like Sagan, Taylor, they, were, they didn't have the cars to go through. By the time he got his bike, he was several minutes behind. I mean, it's just... Was that the bike we saw that was so... No, that was a Colnago. That was a okay. UAE rider. Okay. Yeah. Everybody everybody commented on that on that Colnago. And just, uh, you know, if you're a Colnago, you must be going, do, do we have to show this, <laughs> this image, keep showing this image? FYI, every single bike in this Peloton, no matter who makes it, if it hits whatever, however, whatever that Colnago went through to crack like that, I promise you, every single frame in this Peloton would have cracked the exact same way. Yep. So. Does the, I know it's just a small margin, but, uh, you know, in the pre-show we talked about the leader for Ineos. Is mm -hmm. it Carapaz? Is it Garrett Thomas? Who's on better form? Did we see enough today? Not really. 
Well, we don't know. We don't know what Carapace went through. We were, we were texting back and forth with Johan. We're still there. The, the, the crashes were so big that we're still assessing exactly who went down, who got hurt. We don't know what happened with Carapaz. He could have just maybe come back to the, the Peloton at that point. We don't know exactly what happened. Mm. Clearly, Garen Thomas was still there. Unfortunately, they came in with four leaders with Richie Port, Teo, Garen Thomas, and Carapaz. They lost two today. They didn't really lose Richie Port, but Teo lost a bunch of time. Richie Port is now two minutes behind. Not an ideal start for Neos, but at least they still have Garen Thomas and uh, Carapaz within the fight. But what, what do you make of Carapaz losing five seconds? And, 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 I, and, I, and I actually don't. I don't think a lot of it, but I want to. I mean, I'm curious what you think. I, these are these little punchy uphill finishes. If you're showing up for a three week race and ready for you know hour long climbs, and that's you're focused on that, this is a very hard transition. Like this, this is a rude awakening. I agree, and yeah. this is another reason why I'm so impressed with Primos' finish today because he was in the crash, hasn't raced since Liège, best only Liège, and Carapace was just one towards Switzerland. He's clearly got the race form. But, like I mentioned, we don't know what he went through before that finish line. He could have just been coming back. He could have been part of that crash with six kilometers to go. Most likely, there was almost 100 guys in that crash. So he could have been in there and just, just had cotton back up. So I don't think we can uh, say too much about uh, his form just by what we saw today. Mm -hmm. Did you guys notice how lean Primoz Roglic looks Every, at the everybody. beginning? Yeah. Well, Johan sent us, I don't know what where he found the picture the other day of, of, uh, of Roglic with his kid. But, yeah, he's... Uh, yeah, he's he's ready. Hey, look, he's he's uh, we've said we said it in the preview show. I mean, he's our favorite. This is he knows that he doesn't have many more opportunities to win the Tour de France. So um, and he looked good. Yeah, Roglic was still there. Uran was still there. Like we said, Garen Thomas, David Gadu, Eric Enrique Moss was still there. Nairo Quintana for a small Colombian rider to get through that chaos. Super impressive. Um, and Fulsang was there. Those, in my opinion, are the winners of today. And then you got guys like Valverde, um, Michael Woods, Israeli Cycling Academy, had a terrible day. You know, this, what did he lose, seven he minutes? He lost nine minutes. Nine minutes. Brandon McNulty was, was down as well. Uh, hopefully he's okay. Sepp Kuss, like I mentioned before. Um, so these guys had a terrible start to the tour. You, you never want to start a Tour de France like that, and we hope they can recover. And this Jack Haig, a lot was made about uh, Bahrain bringing him as, the, as their GC leader. Boom, right there, fourth on the stage. Yeah. Maybe they know something we don't know. Just throwing it out there. Well, and also seeing uh, Bling Matthews getting second on the stage with such a hard finish line really is a testament to his fitness right now. I think the, uh, Ma Matthew White is quite happy with his finish. <laughs> Another guy you text with, like, I mean, it's just all you do is you and Whitey just having a little, you know, text affair. <laughs> Before we talk about tomorrow's stage, I know George wanted to talk about the, the riders and their habits, and now that they're back in the tour routine, how everything changes. Yeah, no, it's funny. I mean, the tour, and I was all excited to talk about this, but I was not expecting such a crazy stage today and so many crashes. But I did want to get, like touch briefly upon like what these riders, they're entering this traveling circus where their day is six hours long, four to six hours long, the day of the race. Aside from that, everything is all about recovery. Everything, every single aspect of the day is handled the transportation to the races the direction of the race route uh, everything is planned out they have a schedule everything their whole day is planned out perfectly lance is calling me a diva and i just i kind of started thinking about you know our days back in the tour <laughs> suitcases are, are taken every day we every day your suitcase is packed apparently and i got to thank your partner anna for, for giving me this information the man would not even zip or close his suitcase and bolchka back in the ops room Give me a little knock and confirm if that's true or not. <laughs> so, D, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and award Lance, and I think this should become a daily thing, the Diva of the Day jersey. We should make it a T-shirt as well. So you got it just for the start of the 2021 Tour de France because of the fact that you would not close your suitcase. That's how much of a Diva you were. And I just wanted to make a small demonstration of how hard it would be to close your bag during – this is an open bag, y'all. <laughs> This is a closed bag. Bolchka, my bag is closed. Go. So you wait, made you made Paul Bolchka close wait, your wait, bag. Wait, wait, every wait, day. wait. Before you get too far, you talk about everything being taken care of for the riders. Transportation, you mentioned. Um, how'd you get from the airport? Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is this. Well, is, that's why I brought up the diva thing. Okay. This, right, no, this wait, is wait, a, wait, wait, wait. This is a pile on. Did you have breakfast today? I did have breakfast today. Did I mean, you, uh, they're taking care of me. Did you make breakfast? Or? I did not make breakfast. Huh. Huh. We That's have, right. where I'm going with this? 
The yeah. move is stepping up this year. We have an awesome chef taking care of us. And uh, actually, the old man is actually eating breakfast, which he normally does not eat breakfast. So yeah. I think we're going to see an elevated game from us this year. Yeah, we. I'm still I'm still shocked at this, just this blind <laughs> shot. I mean, this is cheap shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean it was it was we got a new boomstick this year that we'll be making. This is, I just felt like somebody hit the boomstick right over my head. I mean, I I fucking pick you up at the airport, you know. I I even helped you put the bags in the car. I mean, this is and by the way, you to talk like first, you you don't do anything by yourself. First time in thirty years, the man has picked me up. We've traveled all over the world together, and I've come to see him all over the world. First time in thirty years, the man picked me up. Well, that's because your diva game keeps going up. <laughs> yeah, well, I want you to. I know. I knew you were. I knew you were coming in hot. You probably even noticed it on the show yesterday. I was like, "Is this guy? Is he taking Ambien before the show? What's wrong with George? Is, is it? Come on, come on." But um, no, it's, it. it, it, it uh, the, the, I don't even know about the bag thing, but it is true that during the tour, man, it's and it should be. I mean, this is the hardest sporting event in the world. We yeah. lose sight of that, and then. Uh, just physic, just riding the tour is the hardest thing, hardest sporting event in the world. Then you throw in all of these X factors, right? Like what we saw today, these crashes. By the way, I don't know. I mean, if you go back and rewatch Tony Martin's crash, I mean, he took he took a serious dinger he on did. the head, and he's just coming back from a serious injury. I mean, he's uh and he's their guy, and they call him the Panzer Wagon, the the the, the <laughs> tank for for the, for the reason that the man can ride the front all day long. I was teammates with him. And you want him to be healthy. You, Primo's really needs him there. So we hope that he's recovered and can come back in the next couple of days. Hopefully they give him a day or two off and he just can sit in the peloton because they really need him later on. Should we talk about tomorrow? Yeah. I, T- tomorrow I, is a big one too. I would imagine after today, these guys are wishing it was a flat, flat sprint stage, but it, it is not. In, in, in the sunshine. And it's not. Uh, it's, it's, and it's not short either. 183 kilometers. So call that, uh, you know, hundred whatever 15 miles uh, up and down two times up the Muir de Bretagne which is nasty and if the forecast is right it's it's uh it's going to be wet and and also cool like it's it's uh you know the highs like 60 I mean they're riding in the, you know in the 50s high 50s with rain that's that's what I'm saying like that's where guys can get in trouble down the line in terms of uh, just any kind of um cold chest cold anything like that like it and look at the and look at the Muir de Britannia like this thing oh so it's really they're calling it 2k at 6.9 percent but there's pitches um that are more than 10 percent oh like it's, it's the climb is nasty we rode it with uh Cadell won the stage we helped him stay in the front the difference was that year we did it one time we had a run into the bottom of it which is a nice straight run in so you come in with speed this year you got that run in the same run in you do it one time, you do it again, but you have a turn at the bottom. So you're not coming in at 30, 40 miles an hour. So it's going to be a much tougher finish. And right now, I mean, it looks to me like Alaphilippe is unstoppable. Is, the uh, team is going to get him there. He's got the crazy motivation. Uh, we can see the same sort of finish tomorrow. We're going to see the yellow jersey win again tomorrow. What's the finish look like? And how does that favor Alaphilippe? It looks a, a, lot like to, a lot like today. It's Plus, uphill. they do it two times. I mean, you, you, you do Muir de Bretagne with uh 15k to go so right around 10 miles a little short loop in town and then you come and you hit it again right to the finish line uphill finish it's very similar to today very I, similar. I don't know if he's and he's gonna be so inspired and although we we'll see i mean we'll see with uh i mean this goes against i mean uh, uh, vanderpool can't obviously now take the uh, the whole story yeah um well and they also know if alaphilippe goes you go even if it's early. Well, I think they, I think they, they knew, knew today. They knew that today. <laughs> they saw it they, coming. Yeah. They, they just couldn't go. Yeah. But like we mentioned, we're still assessing the injuries. We don't know what Primos had gone through right before that. We don't know what um, Van Art had gone through. So perhaps tomorrow they arrive a little bit fresher and they can go with them. But today it was a display, a display of uh, force. Yeah. That was. Well, before we wrap, I have a, an email from Trent for both of you guys. It says. <laughs> It says, I know they don't want to answer this question, but it's time to give the listeners full transparency oh boy. into their fitness levels. Okay. At this stage of your life, do the guys use any kind of written plan or training volume, macro cycles, weekly hours, planned interval sessions, anything? When is the last time they put down on a piece of paper or a spreadsheet any kind of training plan 
or God forbid, do they still use a coach? Is he? And then it says, <laughs> it says, don't lie to us, George. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> That's is from he, Trent. Is he talking about us? <laughs> He's talking about you two. Why? Well, I, I don't know about this, the, 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 the diva over here, but I, I damn sure don't. I, I don't know the last time I used a heart rate monitor strap, although I did just get the new hammerhead one. I might start looking at that. Um, or a power meter. Like I'm sure George is out like doing 40, 20s and all this, you know, he's, he lives and he lives in these places where all these people, they're so fanatical about cycling. He lives with Julek and Vandeveld and Julek, you know, the little fucking propeller head. I'm sure he's got you a training program. <laughs> well, funny you say that. I, I actually, I, I just got the hammerhead heart rate monitor strap as well, which works awesome by the way. And I, that was the first time I've started using heart rate monitor, um, in, since I retired, but so you about you, ten years. So you I don't look at heart rate. You I don't have look done. At watts. You have done intervals in the last month. And don't this is lie. correct because and Bobby Julik has been helping. We're trying to get my son ready for nationals, so we had him doing some intervals. Although I told him after nationals, no more intervals for the rest of the year because I wanted to keep the boy fresh. Right, but, but I'm saying you have done intervals, not for personal reasons. No, I'm doing the intervals to help my son out. <laughs> it's <laughs> not a plan. I'm not downloading you know he's it just to dropping him training and laughing peaks, and, and we're just trying to give him a little bit of a. <laughs> experience of what it's like to do intervals. That's you it. do realize he's 12. <laughs> I know. That's why I said after nationals, no more intervals. He's 13, by the way, now. Yeah. I, it, so, Trent, uh, I'm a very casual rider. I go out and just ride with friends, as I'm going to do right after this. Um, and, and there's no – I guess the, the moral of this story or the moral of the question is, is there any structure? There's no structure, right? And it's just sort of, I don't know, it, day by day, if it's going to be a road bike ride or mountain bike ride. Uh, how long it's going to be. My schedule, uh, work schedule dictates a lot of that. But Here's but, the structure. You just want to do a little bit of this once yeah, in a while. Yeah, just 100% suffer. So once in a while, you want to suffer up the climbs, have fun, feel that heart yeah. rate, get the sweat going. We're not timing each other up the climbs anymore. Although, you know, I like to finish uh, a little ahead of the old man once in a while, but <laughs> not timing myself, not measuring my watts or my heart rate, although I'm looking at it now, but just for fun. <laughs> yeah, no structure. No structure. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you want to write to us throughout the tour, uh, the move at we do.team. Yep. Keep in mind, we got two more shows coming today. Yep. I'll be jumping on with Johan. He'll give some insight into what he saw today and looking ahead to tomorrow and any developments. And then uh, La Movida. La Movida. Yeah, for all you South Americans, Latin Americans, we got Mario Zabato uh, joining uh, Victor Hugo Pena and Johan Brunil, which is that's the hit squad of uh, racing. So don't miss their show. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And new swag. We got uh, we got the WeDo store all reloaded up. A bunch of new designs that um, our, our our second main squeeze, Hannah Boone. Uh, sorry, Tiff. <laughs> uh, designed a bunch of new uh, sick merch and tees, hats. Uh, got the new sweatpants. Got the um, cool the new bomber jacket. jacket. The bomber jacket. That that one's everybody's talking about. The bomber jacket. That was, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not the only one who can model stuff. I mean, George is not the. I'm sorry, George is not the only one. I, you know, felt like. I looked at that picture and I was like, ooh. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I, he like, still oh, gets man. paid to model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. All right. Hey, crazy first day. Man, I, you got another, I mean, 20 of these days and th th we'll finish with 20 people. I mean, this, yeah. this, this, this is, this let's is a hope, rough. Let's hope we don't see that kind of action tomorrow. No, no. But I worry about the rain. If it, if it holds and, and the forecast holds and it rains, it's, uh, it's going to be bad. Anyways, we hope not. All right, thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you, uh, see you tomorrow morning.